Yeah, I had a chance one time yeah. to marry a billionaire <laughs> when you were like five months. They said, Dad, you have to be so stupid. <laughs> Embarrassing, Dad. Day of Black Season 2, one take one. Hi, I'm Tony Mack, director, filmmaker, and storyteller. Last season, we started conversations around love, healing, and transparency within our community. Now let's delve deeper and continue this discourse with some new and amazing voices. This is Dating Black. It's so love. 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 What is the wildest date you've been on? <laughs> wildest. Elaborate on wild. Um, I picked her up. She's sitting next to me, but she's like dancing next to me. But like she's doing like suspicious moves. Like the moves is like, like stuff like that. It's a bit weird. Cool. We've gone to the to the bar. Um, I've gone to the toilet. Um, I've come back and she is break dancing in the middle <laughs> of the dance floor. You know what's so mad, yeah? So we went Vapiano's. Mm. The girl, she came. In, in, in a headscarf. <laughs> well, wait, wait, you know What's what? What's wrong with a headscarf? No, no, what? I'm, I'm actually... Cause... So what, if I pulled up in my do-rag, it's, it's what, it's, it's fine? Before I laughed, <gasps> but I was going to ask, was, was it name? for religious reasons? But, but nah, it's not. Nah, 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 it's no, yeah, 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 that's, that's yeah. crazy. But she's come back to me, but sweating everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I just... Wait, you don't, you don't read the breakdancing thing? <laughs> She she was honest with who she was. Yeah, but it's, it's not for me. Yeah, but it's not a step up thing when you're going on a date. <laughs> so maybe I'm on the wrong program here, but I haven't really been on a lot of dates, to be honest. Oh, really? Not loads. I, I, one um, kind of a date, but cycling. It's not really a date, that's a, though. That's a wild date to me. Would you do that? Because you're, you're giving faces, like, say you... you stand <laughs> I know you're there it. asking questions about <laughs> it, like, it's, like, acceptable. Would you go on dates in your head I, I wouldn't do it. No, you wouldn't. But... Oh, why not? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> because it's not my bag. It shouldn't be anyone's no, bag. It's not my bag. Why wouldn't you? That is an aesthetic for some people. That's a rubbish was aesthetic. It, no, wait. Was it, like, no, tied a little bit went, and it was no, a part and, of the hairstyle? This was the best that I was getting. Same thing, went on a date. Picked her up, she jumped in the car, but she's fidgeting. We jump out the whip now, we get into the restaurant, but she's still doing the same thing, like moving around, doing this. She's like, oh, like, I got something in me. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what could be in you? You yeah. know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That difficulty for me to get an answer <laughs> is the whole reason why we're having this problem. And to save your sisters, you're avoiding you know answering I mean? directly. Accountability, find it. We had food now, we had food. Jump back in the whip and She's taken now. What's them things? What do you what do you call them things that you know them sex toys? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Would you go hiking on a date? On a date? Yeah. Nah, that's that's crap. <laughs> that's crap. Why that's is crap. it crap? No, I'm not really. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to get to know you or like what. And this is the other thing. Say it's a boom. We go on a hike here. Yeah? Halfway through, I clock raw. Oh, like you're not really. My kind of person. Wow. And then now, what? The so how many feet back now? Wait, so when she brought it out, what did you do? I was thinking, what could I, like, at the same time, it was kind of like, oh, whoa. <laughs> get, get me back. So you continued that situation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to whisper it. So does the amount of money you have matter when dating? Others on, uh, bo on both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. It impacts literally what you can do. You know, um, it shouldn't, but definitely it does. You know, I didn't go as far as saying, but as a man, and I and I told man, if you ain't got bread, don't date. Yeah, yeah it does matter. Yeah. It does. Why? Especially in this climate now as well. Cost they, of living. Yeah, you know, like imagine going to present yourself to someone's family and say, I want to collect your daughter. The, the dad is now going to send the daughter to poverty. Hi. No, no, no. Roski, from asking a girl on a date, yeah, I believe I should pay them, you know what I mean? I want to take you out, you know what I mean? I want to take time out of your schedule. I want you to get dressed. I want you to put on your makeup. I want you to come out. Bro, the least I could do is pay for that meal. Yeah. Do you yeah. disagree? Your face is doing... Thing. No, you know, I'm just I mean, saying. I you can do free stuff, yeah, but... Yeah, I was going to say. Look, see, that's the people. thing, like... <sighs> Girls say this, man. There are some people that are like, look, take me to the park, take me on a walk. Not the park, I have hay fever. Well. <laughs> no, I don't care about their money. Okay. That's mad. I think that's weird. 
your bank balance. Like there's so many more things that I need to, that I need to take to before like I even like you and bank balance is like way down the list. I think for me personally, I earn pretty decent. I wouldn't say I'm rich, I earn decent. I can carry the relationship if I need to. My whole thing is about ambition, right? And like, I'm a very giving, generous person. So what you come with is what you come with. But I think I struggle more with expectation and you're expecting of me to give constantly, then it creates a problem. You see, when we go on, on your hike, you want to go hiking. Yeah. So we're on a hike, you're a millionaire. No, no, you're a billionaire. Mm -hmm. But it's just me and you. Yeah. And you're boring. Brass. Like, I, like, like your billion pound ain't going to help the hike. It's going to be dead. And then when, and then you're going to try lips and it's mad. First date, he says park. Yeah? I have hay fever. Oh, is it? I would I, say no. And I have tablets. <laughs> I'm not coming, I'll tell you no. Why? I'm not sitting on the grass. It's not my bag. So what walk. So what else is free it's that you bag, would do? Your bag, your bag. This your bag is a very <laughs> unique bag. What is in this bag? Someone introduces you to a billionaire who's 20 years older than you and wants to marry you. What do you do? Thank God I'm in the wealth management industry. <laughs> it's okay. You've got actual experience. No, no, yeah. In this economy, yeah. sign me your baby. What do you mean? What do you need? Affection? Have affection. Do you need jokes? I can make you laugh. <laughs> what love? <laughs> love. Love. You have to assess things. Return on investment. <laughs> I'm investing my time, my character. I do it on social, social media for free. I'm not trying to be some billionaire's husband. Smart. People that, people that think that? like that are tapped. Like, you know, sometimes you just got to say it as it is. Like, do you want to be a billionaire's husband? No. We get married, obviously no prenups involved. Set up trust, set up investment vehicles, all of that. Then we make sure that wealth is sorted. Then we can look at generational wealth. Mm. Then if they want to go and leave and divorce me, that's good. I've got the money, generational wealth is built, and here we go. Wow. I wasn't expecting that, to be fair, that's a plan. I mean, you could fall in love. Maybe love can form. There's, there's some sort of love. You love people in can different grow. ways. Can love that money. I can love that money. Love that house. Damn. When I think of money, I think of you. So essentially, I love you. <laughs> hey. That's terrible. I can't lie. I have to be like, nah, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. A billion. It. It's a billion, but I feel like I just value other things above the money in that sense. Financial crisis. I'm coming across wet. <laughs> when you see a baby, like, babe, you say, I'm happy, Charlie's amazing. I, mean, I am. <laughs> that money's amazing. That money's amazing. So just keep on wiring me, okay? Yeah. The day you stop, I'm gonna. That's when that I'm amazing. gonna freeze mid, mid joke. <laughs> I might wanna be a billionaire and have a wife or whatever. Yes. <laughs> but I don't wanna be that. My answer to that is no, I wouldn't marry. Are you? No, after yeah, all no. of that decoration. Probably your father. Think of your son. Think of your son. <laughs> Listen, now are you telling me your son's not gonna get to 18? <laughs> You're walking out of him, yeah, and you're telling that so yeah, I had a chance one time yeah. to marry a billionaire when you were like five months. Because he said, Dad, you how can be so stupid? <laughs> embarrassing, Dad. <laughs> you tell me always you use your brain and wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You didn't even use it yourself. Have you ever dated someone with any form of health issues? So it could be mental health, physical health. Yeah. Um, and what was that like? Yeah, I'm also the person with a health issue. Okay. So I go into relationships with a health issue. I've got a hidden disability, um, which is called peripheral nerve hyperexcitability. It's weird, but it's a bit like epilepsy in some ways, but in your spinal column, right? So it affects my muscles and all of that kind of stuff. And I would say it's made things difficult for me. No, nah, not really, to be honest, no. Nah. But I would though. Yeah, I would. That's like whatever. I give you for instance, right? Getting ready to go out somewhere and I might be having a flare up, so I'm slower to move and I'm not getting out fast enough. And it's a bit like, the day is going, I'm trying to enjoy the day. And you're like, yo, I can't control where I'm at right now. I have dated someone with serious depression and anxiety and funny enough, I've been there myself. It gave me a lot of understanding for what they were going through, but it was then also very hard because I had to be their sunshine, I had to be their light. I think sometimes we have this expectation that everyone should always have it together at all times in a relationship. And for me, watching the way my dad and my mum love each other, that's just not realistic. So for me, I go in with space for you to be ill if it happens, whether mentally or physically. I was diagnosed by a few people and they've told me that I have, that I'm on an autistic spectrum. I'm going through the process of getting the final say so if that's the case, but I've done some tests online and it borderlines Asperger's, which is, a case which is interesting. 
So my brain is like a little mini computer. Now that's great when you throw me in a, a work environment, but then in a relationship, I have built up certain habits which allow me to run in a certain way. And so I could see how those problems then affected the relationship on my part, because my environment, my space has to be a certain way. Are 50-50 relationships healthy in terms of traditional gender roles? I feel like 50-50 looks like different things for different people. And you should always be looking for a relationship that suits you. It's not one size fits all. So we can't bang traditional relationships and say they're rubbish. For some people, they absolutely work. You're talking from a monetary standpoint, right? No, everything. Traditional gender yeah, then roles. 50, then relationships are 50-50. They are. Yeah. Society has drastically changed and it's not going backwards. It's going to continue to move in a direction. And we don't know where that is because we've never lived in a time like this. We never lived in a time where women are taking up spaces which they never took up before. We shouldn't just look at it from like a monetary side of things, you know? Mm. You know what I'm saying? You bringing home the bacon, it's just as important as wife sit looking after the kids and raising the children. Like, I remember as a kid talking to my mum and traditionally my mum, she done both. She would always say to me, don't be looking for no woman like me. Wow. Mm, because all my life I gave to you guys. But then two, she said, women these days are not traditional how I was. And she also said, it's not easy being that woman. So when we talk about 50-50, it could be, I do a lot of the emotional labor in the relationship, you do a lot of the physical labor, or I earn more money than you do, so I take more of the financial strain and you take more of what's happening inside the home. So for me, 50-50 isn't this, we cut everything down the middle. Growing up when I was a bit younger, I thought, okay, cool, if that's the case, and if my mum's saying that, and I love my mum, what can I do as a man who loves the women around me to prepare for my relationship? If I'm earning a certain amount of money, my partner's earning a certain amount of money, and she understands that my work can kind of like, you know, present a certain kind of life, then some people, they find it um, perfectly fine to like take on more of the domestic sort of weight. Almost like an exchange, like a bit mm, of a yeah. transaction. Like It's a sort of unsaid sort yeah, of thing, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, yeah. I like to do all the things that a woman brings to a relationship. One reason was because my mum always taught me, don't let no woman hold you ransom. If you can't do that in a relationship and she wants to hold that from you, yeah, my how are you gonna- told me, don't ever let a plate hold you hostage. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> how are you gonna? How are you gonna manage? Don't ever let a plate hold, a plate you, hold hostage. you hostage. And it's true because it happens. Yeah, yeah. certain man. And I, I certain like food, bro. Cook. Certain man can do beans yeah, yeah. and toast. No, no, no. I can cook. I love. I'm I love, chefy. You get me? I, 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 I love food. You see what I'm saying? I certain man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I love bagels. You give them a curry goal. Yeah. They're spun because they. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They they're more likely to get. Yeah. For that to be like a factor that they count as nice yeah. as a deal. That this is one of the reasons. It's it's been traditionally seen as women should be the ones to cook and whatnot, you know what I mean? And, and, and a man yes. shouldn't. But I'm like... Mm. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> like that. It's like, yes, that is true. Yes. No, yeah, when, just, but, just for the, the sake but, of your... When I actually broke it down, I said, that comes from a, a certain time. Like, women weren't working like that, you know what I mean? So they weren't so, allowed to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They I'm, I remember I asked someone, who do you think you should cook? He said, wow, my wife. I said, so let's say you and your wife have similar job, Similar pay, you've both been out since morning working, you both come home around the same time, who should cook? I said, she should. I said, I said, I said why? I said, because, because I'm tired. I said, so, so, so what is she? If your missus is working too, what's the split? It's still 50 50. You both got to play like your that. part and come together and. You know. mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Husband. <laughs> yeah. I hope you lot are taking notes. Yeah, I'm taking notes. <laughs> now we know why I said daddy. Daddy. <laughs> so what is your biggest dating slash relationship regret? None. Honestly, none. He's perfect, sorry. Yeah, yeah, he's perfect. He's perfect. gospel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll date the right women, but I would... I would normally cuff the wrong person. Probably not being honest. In what way? I just used to lie all the time. Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, when you're young, you get attention from females and you have one female that you, it's your girl you want. 
because you don't want to hurt her feelings, you just tend to start to lie, but it, then it became a habit. What you mentioned about receiving, mm. that's definitely something that, um, even now I still, I'm still learning and, and trying, to, trying to work with and, and understand that just because I can do it doesn't mean I have to. Like understanding that, yeah, I can do pretty much anything. It's robbing someone of the opportunity to create something with you if you don't allow someone else to do things for you. That's friends, family, whoever, right? I don't have none. <laughs> okay. No, as in, I've learned a lot through a lot of things, so I don't really, yeah. All right. Come on, man. Okay, man. We've all heard of red flags. What are your green flags when they in? That's a good question, you know. Open-mindedness is like one, not like raw, like, I don't know, I'm trying to get you to try like some mad sex position, like, I don't know. But it might be like, like stuff that you might not know you're interested in, but you're like open-minded to you. Like, so like, I've gone on dates maybe like where it's not really my thing and that like, they wanted to go, oh, like they, they go art gallery and it's like, oh, right, you know, like, yeah, boom, man, I'm like, oh, you know what, it's a bit decent. But then now you two got a new thing. All of my green flags pretty much sit in comfort, right? Like you're my person. So a green flag for me is when I feel at home and you feel at home. If we're both feeling like that in a relationship, those are the green flags. For me, it's if someone's caring. So it's a case of where they're considerate of who I am. Mm. They, and they also, they're quite attentive to how I am. How you're like emotionally kind of. Yeah. Uh, you know what, when a girl offers to pay something, even though I'm gonna say no, and I'm gonna do it anyway, but it's nice just to know that a girl's willing not, not just to sit there and wait for you to do everything. Somebody that's like, not the same as me exactly. Right. Like I'd like I don't like people that are like trying to be like me. That's whack. Okay. That happens. Really? Like we must share all personality right. traits. Oh, oh, oh like oh you like this? Oh like oh f me, I like it. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, I like it as well. Like oh it's your favorite colour green, oh mine's green as well. Does it happen not a lot? Not really, of you? yeah, I'm not on that. Really? Like if my favourite colour is green, I'd prefer yours to be red. I think a couple of the things that Kind of stuck out for me was like, kind of faith-wise, like where the person was at with regards to that. But I think one of the biggest things was just like, an openness to being like, to growing. I mean, like the best version of themselves. Like I'm big on that. I love beautiful hair. The first thing I look at in a woman is their hair. If it's laid, if it's natural, whatever it is. Being able to apologize when mm. they're wrong. Cause mm. pride. Mighty God. You can say that Feel again. Feel pride sometimes. Strong. Is strong. Strong. Me, if mm. I've messed up, I'll apologize. And these Londoners are... Yes, these London. This is your London. <laughs> so what do you date for? Do you date to marry, to have fun? Um, I date for several things. I think relationships can take various forms. So sometimes it's just a physical relationship because we're physically compatible. But actually, if we're talking about dating specifically, I'm dating for long term and marriage. Just fun that like, to get to know, to see if there's more open the door really more than anything. Like more than anything, I feel like dating is just a door. Like you either open it or you leave it closed. I got dragged on this for Twitter once. Like personally, I don't understand the point of dating with the view of getting into a relationship with you if I don't see a future. That's how I'm set up. So my whole thing is like, yo, if we're just banging, fine, we can just have sex, that's fine. But if I'm actively dating you and I'm taking you out on dates and we're getting to know each other, for me, the aim and the focus is long-term. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I'm putting no pressure on it. But for me, my mom and dad have been together for 40 years and I've watched them love each other. And I'm not attempting to replicate their relationship, but what I would like is the stability that they have with each other. So you do want to get married at some point? No, 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 no. I would get married, but like, that's not on my agenda. But if this is the thing, like, this is what I don't get about girls. You don't want to get married, yeah? But there's like this taboo thing about proposing. But I don't, like, you see, when I was a little boy, getting married wasn't on my list of things that I wanted to do. And now I'm an adult, it's still not. Mm -hmm. But I'm open to it. So if I got a babes and she wants to get married, she can propose and we can get married. That's really interesting. You wanted to propose to you? It's not, that, it's not so much that I want someone to propose to me. Mm. I'm not proposing to nobody because right. that's not on my agenda. If your love life had a movie title, what would it be? 
Dude, that's a big question. You a know. movie title. I'm not even gonna say the first thing that came to my head. Dark no, Knight. Say it. Say it. Be the Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my thing. The Dark Knight. Woo! I'm about to say it. I'm there, y'all. It's all exciting. <laughs> and then I just might cut out in the night, and you won't, you won't see me for two weeks. Wow. <laughs> Little Shop of Horrors. Wow. That's serious. It's a weird and wonderful movie. I don't know what to tell you. Much ado about nothing. I see. <laughs> For me, it would probably be like something like search within the wilderness. <laughs> so that's a random one. Rush hour. She's always rushing me to do something. And I was, I'm tired. Sometimes just leave me alone. The Titanic, man. <laughs> that's even worse, bro. Think like a man. What? Think like a man. Why? Because women think they're men nowadays. We have an unrealistic expectation of men, and then with men, they just paint us all with the same brush. My ex's mum, I felt like she used to want to fight and tussle with you. That I used to feel like she wanted to date her son. That like I will date my friend's ex. Wow. I'll do it again. Really? Yeah. <laughs>